A.W. Tozer said before God can use a man greatly, he first crushes him. Uh, I, I know that my guest is probably taking that personally, and we're going to see that he truly is a miracle man. It is a pleasure to have Bruce Van Natta all the way from Wisconsin. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. You know, there's a little bit of awe when you know the story and you look at a man who looks so fit and healthy and no medical, physical aftershock here. God is good. He does <sighs> miracles. Okay. November 16th, mm -hmm. 2006. Yes. Take us there, Bruce. Uh, traveling mechanic. I went around the state of Wisconsin doing repairs on heavy equipment, uh, dirt moving equipment, stuff like that, trucks. And it was the end of a three-day job. I was doing an engine repair and uh, the truck ended up falling on me. Do you want me to go through the... The jack went out, right? Yes, yes, uh, exactly. This is an 18-wheeler. Yes, it was a Peterbilt logging truck. I crawled underneath the front and uh, the midsection of my body was directly underneath the axle. The man I was working with had jacked up the truck and not put blocking or jack stands or anything underneath it. Uh, when I crawled in, I told him to crawl up in the top of the cab, check the water temperature. He did, the truck rocked, and in my peripheral vision, I watched the jack shoot out from underneath the axle. And this, so the axle's got the front wheels like this. It's a dropped axle, so it's the lowest thing. It's the lowest part of the truck. It's amazing you weren't killed instantly. I should have been, yeah. Uh, and you were conscious at least until the first responder got there. I was conscious for probably, I'm not sure exactly, but maybe, you know, 10 minutes, some, something like that, roughly. Then what? Well, at the point that it, it fell on me, I could tell that there was, I looked, the axle was, it's deep. It's probably like that deep and it's about that wide. And so it's going across my midsection like this. And I looked on my left side of my body and I could tell that I was less than an inch thick. I had been crushed You'd all been the way across. You'd been squished down to one inch. Less than an inch on this side and probably maybe two inches. It was at a slight angle. You said it was like a blunted guillotine. Yes, because the bottom of this axle is rounded. So it, it crushed me flat. And so I, inched, I automatic reaction tried to like push it off, but obviously I can't. Bench press 10,000 yeah, pounds. Exactly. So then it was just a crisis prayer, 911 prayer, Lord help me. You got yeah. to call that out twice. Yes, I called that Lord out help twice. Me. Lord help me. That's it. And uh, the next thing, uh, the, the man jacked the truck up off me. Now obviously he, he knew I had to have a back injury and I did have two vertebrae that were cracked, crushed. And so he didn't want to move me, didn't want to be you a know, paral paralyzed person, whatever. Mm. So I ended up grabbing the front bumper pulling myself out, I'm on a creeper, and my feet were towards the back of the truck, and I was directly parallel with the center line of the truck, directly underneath the engine. I grabbed the bottom of the front bumper, which is just behind my head. I grabbed it and I pulled myself out just to the point where the big chrome bumper was right above my throat, like this. And it was at that point that I went unconscious. And then the, the big story happens where my spirit leaves my body. I go up into my spirit, goes up into the roof of the garage, which just proves what the Bible says is true, that we're made up of a spirit mm -hmm. and a body, and my spirit mm -hmm. left. And, and so How did it look from up there? Actually, total peace. There was uh, absolutely no, no pain, no, uh, no sorrow, no sadness, anything like that. It was just peace. It was like watching a movie. I was so disconnected from the scene that I was looking down upon, because I'm looking down like this. So if the front of the truck is where this table is, I'm looking down at the front of the truck and I could see that my head was sticking out from underneath the front bumper. My eyes were closed, my head was turned to the driver's side. The man that I've been working with was on his knees above me, running his fingers, fingers through my hair, crying, um, saying he's sorry, uh, apologizing, saying I should be the one dead, not you, stuff like that. I'm listening, just watching from above, but the awesome part is on each side of him, which is on each side of me, was an angel also on their knees just like this man. And he's like six foot one, six foot two, but their heads stuck up, you know, this much taller than his. So if now you factor in a longer leg, they had to be like eight feet tall, very broad shoulders, Pretty huge. Pretty muscular, huge, these angels. Big guys, not wimps, big guys. Do, do you think they were relieving the pressure? No, what, what they, they doing? I could tell from where I was looking, the big chrome bumpers like this, and they, the one from the, like the driver's side or my right as I'm looking down, had his arms angled in towards my body, and the one from the left, same thing. So they looked, from my point of view, matching, like bookends, they had their hands on my body. They were touching me, because the, the, the truck was already jacked up off me at this point. I'd already pulled myself out to where my head is sticking out. Uh, they never budged. They had long hair, they didn't have wings, they were wearing robes. There was a light, they, there was a light emanating off of each one of them, a glow, a yellowish light off both of them. They were bright. Um, now the emergency responder interrupted this yeah, one by moment. Yeah, one by one, the people started coming in. Um, and you were asked to fight. 
Yes, uh, the, the first First woman, you were asked to open your eyes. That's what broke this. Yes, uh, yes. I think. Elevated perspective. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm guessing now. Maybe 40 minutes or so that I was up in the up in the ceiling. My spirit removed my body, looking down, and then this woman had come in. Now everybody was there except for her at this point. She was like the last last person to show up, and everybody's just kind of leaving me alone for the most part. And she gets down on her knees, moves this other guy to the way, and says, "What's his name?" I'm listening. I'm watching. Listen to every conversation. I listen to two people back behind me over here saying that I was dead, and. Uh, that didn't bother as you. As good as dead. He's as good as dead, they're saying. You, you weren't troubled by that? No, uh, because I was so disconnected, I didn't realize that that guy laying in the truck was me. Mm -hmm. That's how disconnected I was. It was just like watching a movie. I didn't realize that that was me. And so I was watching, and she comes in, and she asks what my name was. She starts slapping my face, and she says, Bruce Veneto, open your eyes. And she get louder, louder, louder. Next thing I know, like that, my spirit is back in my body. And you're looking at her. And I'm looking at her, and a couple things went through my mind. Uh, first of all, uh, the first thing, the immense pain, mm. this crazy amount of pain. And uh, that was the first thing that hit me. And then the next thing that hit me was I started to piece together and realized that I had just been in the ceiling, and the guy laying out at the truck was me. Mm. And I'm putting it all together, and I'm getting scared because I'm saying, that's not good. You know, it's not good when your spirit leaves your body. I must be on the verge of life and death. So. So I was scared. She asked you, who do you have to fight for? Yes. What do you have to fight what for? What do I have to fight for, exactly. May I show a picture? Oh, sure. Because <laughs> I'm sure this is the first thing that came into your mind. Yes. Your beautiful family. Wife and four kids, yes. And, you know, this is very interesting to me. She knew you needed to participate in this if you were going to make it at all. Yeah. And... Uh, she was praying. She, I found really? it later. I found it later that she was praying at that time. She was praying. Yes. So they got you to the trauma center? Yes, they med flooded me to the largest trauma center in our state of Wisconsin. And uh, they, I kept my eyes, she said, keep your eyes open and focus on something. So in the helicopter ride, I focused on the back of the guy's the vent on a helmet. Uh, you know, I just kept changing the focus, different things. And uh, got, into the, got into the trauma center, they put me in a CAT scan machine, they took more pictures. And the two doctors started to, um, I don't want to say argue, but they were disagreeing, going back and forth, and it was troubling me. I found out later, they told me the reason why is because they, they were looking at the CAT scans and they said it was the CAT scans of a dead person. They couldn't realize or couldn't figure out why the pictures were showing one thing, but yet my eyes were open and my heart was pounding. And so they're trying to make sense of it, piecing it together. And one was saying, well, it must be this. The other one was saying, it must be that. And they're saying, it doesn't make sense. So they're going back and forth. And Surviving this would be the first miracle. You were pretty damaged, especially your intestines and so on. Yeah, well, because on my left side, your, your heart is on your left side, I had five arteries uh, that were severed. Not, not torn, not pinched, but completely severed. So doctors say I should have bled to death in just a few minutes. Uh, UCLA out in California, the college out in California had done a study, and they used data from trauma centers around the world, and they can't find anybody else in the world that's ever lived from the type of injuries that I've had at any trauma center in the world. One person in somewhere in Europe had one uh, artery that was severed, at, like in front of a, like a, a car accident right in front of the hospital, and they were able to come in and, and save them, but not, not even close to anything what I had. I think the book uh, mentions five surgeries, five yes. major surgeries mm -hmm. to get you back mm -hmm. together. Over the period of a year. And I, I love that to, to one of those, your wife just brought a Bible, uh, obviously. That was to the night. <laughs> the night of my uh, accident when she found the out. All she brought was a Bible and she stayed at the hospital for three weeks. Second miracle was, and I don't know if we have time for all the details, yeah. but... Uh, Second miracle was in February, the accident happened in November. By February I was starving to death because most of my intestines were removed. Mm -hmm. I was down to less than three feet of intestine. And uh, they had basically given me roughly a year to live. I was going to just starve to death. They were feeding me intravenously and doing stuff, but it wasn't, it's not enough. They can't keep you going for, for a long period of time. Man came from New York, the Lord woke him up two days in a row, Bruce Carlson, and he flies out because God told him to. I had met the man one time, he's not a friend, he's not a pastor, just he is a full-time church worker. He's retired now, but he flies out and uh, came and prayed for me in the hospital and he just prayed, put his palm on my forehead and he prayed in a way that I wasn't used to hearing people pray from the background that I had. And he, mm -hmm. he spoke to the mountain as Jesus told the disciples to and he commanded my small intestine to supernaturally grow in length and he said, now, and when he did, I felt rumbling inside my stomach. And I, could, and I turned to a man and said, it felt like a snake just came and coiled inside my stomach. Then they do some more tests and find out uh, within a few months, I start gaining weight and they do some more tests and find out that I had a, a creative miracle. A whole bunch of intestine came out of nowhere. And what's cool is we've got before and after doctor reports that show it and prove Indeed it. Indeed we do. Yeah. And I love that he prayed that God would answer 
all the yes. prayers that had been yes. prayed for you. Yes. He actually turned to that investment yes. that had already gone up. Yes. Something you struggled with in your recovery, allowing other people in. Yes. 